episodic structure of playwriting <coughs> that's much different. Like, I realized when I did Little Foxes at Shaw, which I did with Cameron, I had never done a one set people talking play in my entire career, where they just stayed in the same room for three <laughs> acts. I was just like, holy shit, what am I going to do? Where's the transition? You know? And, and so, the, but because modern plays and new plays tend to be these episodic things that you spend as much energy, I think, in the process, and that's getting from thing to thing. Like, how do you get from scene to scene? How do you get from world to world? How do you get from meal to meal? Or whatever whatever the challenge is within the thing. And I, I love that, but it's also often, sometimes you realize, I think that's where I realize where something's off the rails, where I think, okay, I can make every transition, except that one. Like, I can figure it out within the constructs that you set up for us. Production. Yeah, because it's very musical, right? So, like musical music. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, but, and it is sort of all the art forms coming together. I mean, I think the thing at, at NTS that I was so grateful for was that my the teacher that was the most influential to uh, to my class, and we were together with the playwrights. So, it was the designers and the playwrights had a lot of classes together in my short time at theater camp. <laughs> and um, but. Uh, or director camp, I think I'm better. Yeah. But it was our art history teacher. We had this fantastic woman uh, who happened to be Neil Monroe's wife, Carol Galloway, who was the most, she was our most regular teacher, actually. And we spent all of our time looking at art, looking at movements in art, going to galleries, talking about pictures, and then translating them into stage pictures. And, and so the connection for me, because I came to, to it quite, was really, that, that just seemed impossible to avoid. Like I couldn't imagine not dealing with the stage picture as part of the narrative, you know, as the narrative tray for things. That the words can, the words tell you what that is, but the, that has to support, that has to carry it. And, and that, I feel, comes back to that notion of sonography. I still think that's pretty unusual, though, Milo, in terms of training directors. I have no idea. Yeah. It's the only training I did. Yeah, least, <laughs> we're, 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 we're talking to two directors who are very visual right here. There's an awful lot of directors out there who aren't, and, and it's a very difficult thing. I mean, we probably should have had a couple of them come as well. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, but I don't know any, honestly. Yeah. I, can't, oh. I can't think of anybody that I wouldn't say was, I mean, well, I guess you clearly do. But it's, no, it's, and, and it's, it's a tricky, but also it's like with anything, uh, the picture, like it's it's amazing to me how far off from things until you see the actual picture. Like you can talk about things together until you see the picture of it, and that's when you know whether you've been talking together or not. Yeah, well, that was interesting because I was fascinated by the fact that you start with words, like lists of words. Like, like does that very soon develop into into the into images or? Well, the irony is, I start with images often. Well, no, there are images. There are definitely images in my head. Right. right. Those those come first, but. Um, but a lot of times these these words are images, too. Mm -hmm. so they're, they're yeah, not like just Alice, like you're saying, Alice and Morgan and Andrew. Yeah, so they are images themselves, but they don't have to be tangible images. They don't have to be a, a, an image in terms of a thing. It can be Alice and Morgan. It can be a time machine. And then which time machine to me? Those are those are images that, that I get this list of. That, you know, it says classy, uh, jazz. Shine, you know, um, that, <laughs> yeah, York, or do you know what I mean? And those, those are images, yeah, that those list of, which is just a way of listing it out, yeah, or, or talking about, even if we, if, you know, we didn't, if it wasn't listed out, we would talk about it, or mm -hmm. we would come up at dinner, or we would come up in the car, in the car drive, you know, drive to shop, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think it's constant, but, but to me, those are images, and those are what I'm designed to do, especially if they come, if they are worse taken right from. Script, because then you're still absolutely using the, the playwright's words, not and not paraphrasing. Them. And the seven years that we worked together, sometimes even in the word list, that you know we already have this inside joke written that most of the plays that we work on either have funerals or airports. Yeah. And we're just like, oh, it's like you know, okay, hey, we've got to show them to do it together. Goes does it involve airports? Because <laughs> let's not do airports again, or, you know. So. That's one of the images <laughs> that will pop out. And yeah, so, so some of the some of the words are like the location.
page through, but oftentimes they're not. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, when I say airport, it's it, it's not necessarily the, the literal location, but the, the, the sense that uh, being in an airport can feel like most of the time, like, you know, kind of like vast space and the, you know, those nice lights and orangey stuff, like, yeah, like that, that kind of thing. you ever do an airport? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just put it in our list. I'm going to stick in something spiny and possibly dangerous. Um, we've all been to plays where it seems that the director and the designer were actually working on different scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, the actors, poor dears, are trying to find a way to do the play where they're not facing up stage all the time. Um, is, is this a, a failure, do you think, is this a failure of meshing, uh, an attempted mesh that hasn't come off, or is it true that the sort of collaboration that you're thinking about, that you're immersed in, is actually unusual? Um, I, I, as an actor, I'm constantly, I'm, I, I have a number of pictures in my mind of the director and the designer quite clearly having different pictures mm -hmm. um, and the director having to, in some cases, overtly work around the, the problems <coughs> that set on the set. So is, is this two different ways of working or is it, is it your way of working that hasn't worked this time? Well, I, I mean, everybody makes a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, there's always that time where you have this great idea and then you realize Wow, that was, that's a hugely only great idea for that one moment, and then for the rest of the time, what are we gonna do? Um, so, so I, I feel like sometimes it can just be that's you get uh, seduced by a visual that excites you, and is seems to serve something central to the play, but then you get into the mechanics of it, and you're a little bit up the creek, but. Um, but I, I, I don't I don't know I don't know if you can actually do it. I've never been in, I've been I mean luckily I've never been in a process where I did not have a full on collabor collaboration with the designer where if something was really wrong we fixed it you know like we, like. Do you think you've seen plays where there was a collaboration? There well, was what, a yeah. Oh yeah. And what were your clues? Pardon? What were your clues? Like watching it, maybe, maybe that team thought they were working really well together. <clears throat> maybe, but that didn't look like that on stage. <laughs> and you see that all the time at Fringe or Summer Works, for example. And oftentimes, you know, I, like, you know, thought I was complaining, like, don't, don't they know how to talk to each other? Like, you know. They don't. I think what part of it is sometimes I think directors think they have to talk to designers about things. Yeah. Like reality. Yeah, so. most of the time, it's, you know, that's the, the, the impression. Know, because some of it, you know, some of the stuff, I use that example because you can watch so much theater in one day and you can totally see the range of like, okay, yeah, that's, you know, something really happened there and something did not, right? So, yeah, I think especially for young directors and designers, you know, to me, they just, just don't know how to communicate with each other. It's all about exits and entrances and projections. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I, I can use an even bigger example in the opera, the production of War and Peace. I felt there was a real dislocation between the director and the designer there, or I hope there was, because there were some really weird choices that I could not understand, not least of all having the whole guys in the, you know, Napoleon's army facing up, you know, like the, the where they were headed was the, the painted backdrop upstage. So, Little guys, like it was the oddest thing I ever saw. I but, like, but sometimes too, it can be just totally a, the director's aesthetic. Right? Absolutely. Well, that's some what directors I really just I want to park their actors there, and you yeah. know, as a designer, what you're gonna yeah. do? I mean, I, I guess I got the kind of conceptual notion of why he might have done that, but still, it didn't actually function. Right. And I think a lot of directors, not a lot, but some directors don't realize the how powerful the visual is, that how the people who are watching are taking so much from that. They don't. It's, they're all involved in the script and you know, care. Yeah, like there are some, you know, direct. Some directors don't care for transitions. Mm -hmm. It's like blackout, scene change, lights up. Like you know, it's just 
That's another truck. Look at 